Are we recording? Here's the camera. I don't know. Are we recording? I don't know why I'm looking at the square stop, but... What could go wrong? This is only the 110th take. Oh my god, this is going to be the worst video. <laughs> All right, here we go. Hey guys, Aldred Bird here. Hi, Carolyn A.G. here. Hey guys, it's me. Hi guys, my name is Najee Saleh. Hi, Sabine here. Zay Maker here. Hi, it's me, Jansen. Hello, I am Hitre Gorsishir, also known as Dr. Wang. Hmm? Hi, I am Shirley Jast. Kabina A.3 here. I'm Val, known as Valerie. This is Scott Allen, CA. Hey, hit record, JoeFed62 here. Hi, it's Jake Kate here. Hi guys, my name is uh, Platon. Uh, hey, it's Matt. This is a video Q&A contribution. The questions for today, there are three questions. First is, where do you live and what makes it unique? Where am I actually? I have no idea. I live in a house. <laughs> oh, that was stupid. I live in Tennessee. It's nice, it's a peaceful, quiet area just to collect my thoughts. I live in Alberta, Canada, where the summers are short and the winters are super long. I live in Northern Kentucky, U.S. of A. I live in Los Angeles, California. I lived here for about six years. I live in New Zealand. I was born in New York City, the Bronx. Now I'm currently living and working in Chattanooga, Tennessee. So we live in Louisville, Kentucky. Do I enjoy living here? No. I live in West of France in a region called Brittany, in a very small town. I live in central Arizona, Phoenix area. I am from Kathmandu, Nepal. Yes, it is a very small country in between China and India. I'm from Russia, but I'm living in New Zealand. It's an island, not not far from Australia. It takes about an hour to go from uh, one side of the island to another side. I'm living in the countryside, full of undulating hills and sheep. Oh, I live in Vancouver, Canada. My hometown was in the middle of nowhere. I'm back in my hometown after being 12 years away. This is Long Island, New York. Uh, the town is Smithtown. And I live pretty much almost smack dab in the middle of the United States, in Omaha, Nebraska. I, I live in the Midwest. It is very cold. I'm not in an area that's very supportive of really anything about me. <laughs> so the second question was, is there a piece of art or contribution that you've done as a result of your location and surroundings? Talking about doing what I love. Now that I really love photography, and this is my first photograph that was published by uh, National Geographic's online. A website. The piece that I did was from last year for Inktober and it's called Deep and this was like my memories of growing up in the winters in Canada which ironically I drew that in California. The piece that stands out to me that in a subliminal way is about Los Angeles I guess was End of Day which is a sort of journal entry I had as a dad coming home late. Um, and not being able to see my daughter's bedtime um, or experience that and even say goodnight and all that. You know, uh, being, being up late, doing creative stuff, you know, all that, uh, that, that was very hard. Um, and I needed to express that. I needed to kind of write down an idea of, of what I would say to her when she was sleeping and what I wanted to say but I couldn't wake her up to say. And, you know, uh, uh, I would imagine a lot of Los Angeles parents go through that. One of my records which I think shows affinity for nature is called In the Light of Wishes, which has two of my favorite things, dandelions and sunsets. The Looking Up project for me, I love the sky. I think the sky is just like ever-changing art. I think it's amazing and inspiring. Because let's face it, we all want to believe in magic and hope that our hopes and dreams come true. And when I look up at the sky, it reminds me that I am free. And that is a very difficult thing to remember when you feel stuck in a lot of ways and when you have a lot of heavy things on your shoulders. Yeah, I think uh, freedom is, is very inspirational. Uh, it's a very inspirational factor. So whenever you are, if you, um, uh, if you don't have to slave away, that's, um, that's a ticket to, um, to be inspired. 
So the third question is, where do I go to get inspired? I think that the question of how space affects creativity is a really interesting one. My favorite creative space is the outdoors. You know, inspiration comes suddenly and it can come when you look for it. I've really struggled. I've had major, major blockages in terms of writing and artwork. It lasted for years. And part of that to me was the environment. I was not happy here figured out, okay, I need to draw inspiration from someplace else. And in that process, I figured out to go within. And what's cool about that is that I realized it doesn't matter where I am, I can be creative. Where, where do you go when you need inspiration? Away from here. <laughs> but I have also learned that just about everything in life can be inspiring. I don't like where I live. <laughs> I am working to change that. I don't know where I belong, but I do not belong here. The thing that really inspired me is lack. It's not really necessary to be influenced by my surroundings as much as maybe lack thereof. I live in an ocean of lack. Sometimes there is lack of electricity. There's a lot of noise in Los Angeles. And sometimes there is the lack of clean drinking water, let's say. Just a lot of sensory overload. Sometimes there is a lack of transportation. If you're going to take public transport, then it is so jammed, so packed up. You do not want to go into transportation. I love nothing more than being in a crowd of people to pick up on the quirkiness of, you know, the human condition, as it were. Sometimes you have to walk the whole distance and it's really is very, you know, tiring and all that. And I find that sometimes it's nice to just go for a drive or even just go outside and sit in the car. That lack is the source of inspiration because when you do not get instantly what you want, because since most of the world lives in instant gratification, you know, you what you want, you just get it. And as much as I love all of the activities and the options that are available to me in Los Angeles. I have MS, so I spend an awful lot of time inside my home. There's more time to sort of be out and about and experience all the things that the area has to offer. There are times where a pain or discomfort or fatigue will just make it almost impossible for me to even get out of bed. So the only way to cope with the pain of having to, you know, walk that extra mile or having to stay in line for that extra duration of time, you create something in your mind. And those are some of the best times for me to create because I can't really do anything else. To just sit in the quiet and sort of let your thoughts take you wherever they might go. And that creation is the result of the heat record of uh, things that I put out because when I feel bored or when I feel pain. Oh, and I do whatever I can to keep myself busy and my mind off of the pain. Uh, having to do something extra due to the lack, then this lack gives me the material to do something. The inspiration really comes from sort of within, I guess. Okay, so basically the nothingness that I feel between what I have and what I want, that is the source of my inspiration. It is not something that I do out of pure happiness, actually. I think that making the best out of things isn't a selfless thing to do or like a I'm such a good person thing to do. It is something that I do to cope with daily existence. I think it's good to make the best out of all of the situations because then you end up feeling better, being more productive, and the pain or discomfort, emotional, mental, uh, physical, doesn't end up being in vain. And that's been really important for me. It is something I do to feel alive, in a sense, and not to be sucked into the vacuum of pure darkness or nothingness. Not having all of this pain be in vain, I would prefer to turn it into something beautiful. All this pain being in vain, that is such a good lyric. I'm gonna go write some more lyrics and then I'm gonna find some really cool instrumentals on him record. Actually, my inspiration doesn't come from places. It comes from people. So when I need inspiration, I spend some time with my friends and talk with them, and that's all. Hey, Fox. Hey. Where do you find inspiration in the place that you live? In the place that I live? Uh, do you mean my muse? Do you 
have a muse that is attached to your location? I have two muses that are attached to my location. Even being a love skeptic, what I really love most of all in life is my sweetheart, partner in crime, partner on hit record, skateboard. We spend almost all of our time together and we're doing our best to make up for lost time. I think that's what love is all about. I stared at this piece more times than I can count when my kidneys were failing. It just reminded me of that saying, hope floats. I also like to keep my brother's artwork nearby, Omar San Giovanni. My mother watches me when I sing. This was also made by my brother. My mom had early onset Alzheimer's right after I was diagnosed with kidney failure. I am surrounded by some of the things I love in the gaming world, as well as the pitter-patter of furry paws. I haven't used this guitar in a very long time. I remember I was so happy when my father bought it for me. A window in a door in a house on the floor of the planet that I call my home. I have seen horrible things. Lived through horrible things. My body has been broken so many times. My heart ripped, shredded, burned. My mind has rolled quiet. to fog, to hide. Sometimes I still feel lost. But there are times that I gain ground. Somehow finding strength. Strength that lays buried six feet deep beneath skin. Maybe it's hope. Maybe prayer. But when I dig deep, I hold strength in my hands.